as it relates to how to build long lasting wealth. First question for you, what is wealth? All right, if I wanna build wealth, I need to first understand what wealth is. Then the next question would be, well, how do I acquire it now that I know what it is, or I think I know what it is, and, and this is what has led me to this point to watch this video on how to build long lasting wealth, like how to build it, sustain it, perpetuate it, right? I think there's a question before the what is and the how and the who and the when, the where, why, all that. The question before that is what is your moral belief about wealth? Okay, if you're tuning in live, morning, Edwin, I'd like you to answer this question. What is your belief about wealth? Answer me that in the comments. What, what, what do you believe about wealth? And also answer what is wealth? So there is the definition of wealth, then there's your belief about wealth, and those could be two completely different things. Some people think that wealth is only for a few select people. A lot of people think they don't deserve wealth. That's a belief. I don't think I deserve wealth. I don't know how to get wealth and keep it. That's a belief system that they have. That's not a fact. That's not a truth. That's just a, their own belief system. There's people that have a great view on wealth. They believe that wealth comes to them, right? They believe they attract wealth to them. Pretty cool. So that doesn't necessarily mean that that's true about wealth either, even the good part or what we would interpret as good. Like, oh, if someone has a, a wealth mindset, an abundant wealth mindset, and they're positive about wealth and wealth comes to them and they attract wealth because of certain things that they're doing, that doesn't necessarily mean that whatever wealth is, is matching what they believe about wealth, even though it's a good thing, right? So let me see some comments, right? Good morning to Edwin. Top of the morning. Let's get it. BZ. Let me, let me see some comments, right? Before I, before I share with you the data, the, the, the definitions and stuff that I put together here, I don't want to reveal my board yet. I'm going to wait till I get a few responses. What is wealth? What is your belief about wealth currently today? Don't look it up. Don't Google it. Like I want it to come from the heart. What do you currently believe about money, right? What do you currently believe about wealth? What do you currently think wealth is? right currently today based on your experience your tribals your obstacles your challenges okay wealth is the abundance of money or goods okay that is edwin's definition wealth is the abundance meaning a lot of money currency or goods goods meaning materials right goods meaning services uh goods meaning Houses, cars, boats, yachts, jets, vacations, traveling, access, VIP, right? It is being able to be financially independent. So that is what wealth is to BZ. So we're already at two different definitions so far for what wealth is. Give me your belief, BZ and Edwin, about wealth. What is your belief about wealth? You defined it. Now, what is your belief about wealth? Give me that. Let me see some comments. Got 14 people in the house. Let me see. Let me see. I'm going to wait because I know there's like a 15 second little delay when I ask these questions. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. I'm going to try and get some more people in here. I forgot to uh, send out a little email blast. What is your belief about wealth? What do you believe to be true about wealth? 17 people now. Get in the comments. Get in the comments. Let me see it. We can't move on if I don't see enough and I don't want to share my screen. I don't want to share my whiteboard just yet. I want to see where we're at. I want to see who I'm dealing with. And this will be really interesting if we're in alignment or you get to decide whether or not you're going to believe my belief about wealth or my definition. Edwin. And, and you know what? Think on it. I'm giving you a couple seconds. Really think on this. Edwin says, wealth to me is having the ability to live life as I am living it now without worrying about money or goods. Wonderful. That is a belief 
about wealth, right? That's a belief system Edwin has currently on the topic of wealth. The ability to live life as he sees fit, the way he's living currently right now, he's basically saying, I am wealthy based on how I'm living currently, right? And it doesn't come with this worry about money or goods. BZ, let me hear what you got to say. What is your belief about money? Now I'm going to try and get some more people in here live to tune in. 16, 17 people in here. Let me hear more. Let me see one or two more responses. Help me out. Help me out. Here we go. You like the shirt? Thank you so much. But let me hear your answer. Amit, what is your belief about wealth? You just joined in. What is your belief about wealth? And what is wealth? Give me the definition of wealth according to your own words. Give me your belief. Boom, BZ. My belief about wealth is having a legacy for my family's future. So now Edwin's answer was in the present wealth. BZ's answer about his belief about wealth is more future. This has to do with a legacy for my family's future, less about the current state that he's he or she is in, right? For for BC. This is very interesting how we how we answer this stuff. Very interesting. We got one person that's thinking far out and saying wealth is over there in the future of my family's legacy. One person says wealth is right here, right now, the way that I'm living without worry or goods, right? And then two definitions of wealth is wealth is the abundance of money or goods. Another person said is being able to be financially independent. Amit, what do you got for me? What do you got for me? I'm patient. I'm patient. Real clarity here. Get some real clarity. Hello, Morris. Wealth, legacy, freedom from my life. Pretty simple. That's Morris. Wealth is legacy, freedom from my life. So it has to do with him and also others and the legacy Delius Morris creates. Cool. I like that. So that is the belief. What What is wealth, right? Wealth is belief, is legacy, freedom for my life. What is wealth? I want to see that while I'm waiting for that. I'll send this email out real quick to my audience. Hello, Kim. Thank you for answering. Having an abundance of cash flow to support community and my lifestyle in any way I desire without any concern, as well as leaving an inheritance for my children's children as we are commanded. As we are commanded. So this is implying that there is a commander giving a command at the end. Wealth is having an abundance of cash. Kind of, she kind of combined it together here. So her definition, the abundance of cash flow. This is also a belief. The belief is to support community and my lifestyle in any way I desire without any concerns as well as leaving an inheritance for my children's children. So the first part of her answer was the definition, abundance of cash flow, boom. Belief to support, like my belief about wealth is supporting communities of and lifestyle in any way I desire without any concerns as well as leaving an inheritance for my children's children as we are commanded. Another belief meaning that's not actually coming from Kim's own thought, right? She's saying we're commanded as we are commanded. So she's implying there's, there's we, there's, and then there's a commander involved, right? That's, that's, that's pretty loaded, but it's good. I like it. I don't like, I don't not like any of these things that you guys are saying. So I don't, I want to make sure that as I'm reading it, I'm not reading it in a way that's making it wrong or incorrect. I'm reading it as is, all right? And I'm interpreting how you wrote it, okay? Admit, wealth does not have to be limited to money. Anything which you want to conserve, use for your comfort, right? Uh, slash life and pass it to others later on. Money is a tool to generate that wealth. Okay, so money is a tool to generate that wealth. So that means in Amit's definition here, wealth is not money because he said money is a tool to generate that wealth. What the heck is wealth then, right? So in Amit's definition, money is not wealth in that. That's what he said, right? It may not, he may not have said it, but that's what is implied in how he wrote that. And it's very important that we break down how we 
literally talk, how we use words, because you are, you're saying something, even if you're not saying it, you're giving your definition and your belief. This is a really good type of work when we're looking at money, wealth, make it, keep it, multiply all this stuff. You'd be surprised what you're saying about what you think about a thing, but then your words mean something totally different. And then if we're living a life of confusion as it relates to our personal finances, I'm telling you right there is the root. Your belief and the facts about the matter at hand are off. So therefore, your financial life is not going to be in alignment with how you feel because you're saying something but meaning something different. Wealth is also an abundance in health and spirituality, not just, re not just related to money as a tool. Good morning, Kingdom Citizens. I want to see your answer, Cece. I want to see it. What is your belief about wealth? What is wealth? Two different questions. Some of us are combining it. That's cool. I'm not against that. I want to just, I want to get your authentic responses. And then hopefully you can be open-minded to how I'm going to present what wealth is, belief about wealth, right? And you get to make a decision. Either I believe what Denzel is saying. He's in alignment with what I was already saying. He just kind of, you know, formulated it maybe a little cleaner or whatever, or just made it more clear, whatever it may be. Or you get to say, I don't believe that. I'm going to stick to my own belief, right? And I get to challenge the way I'm currently thinking. Maybe I need to pivot slightly. Maybe I need a slight pivot. That's what I'm hoping to solve for today, or at least have a direction that we're all essentially going in. So we got some really good responses. Again, if you're catching the replay, I'm going to, I'm going to comment two of those questions in the comment section. What is your belief about wealth? What is wealth? Okay. I personally, now I'm going to go into the lesson here. Okay. I personally believe majority of my audience and even myself, right? I'm going to put myself in here. I'm not going to act like I know it all. Okay. I believe majority of my audience, majority of people in the world, including myself, we think we have a problem as it relates to money and wealth. I think our bigger problem is our moral belief about wealth. So there's a belief system that you have about wealth. And I think for the majority of people I work with, my clients, people I serve on this YouTube channel, and when I collaborate and when I interact with other, other folks out in the world, is their belief system about wealth is really messed up. Even though they may know the definition of wealth, how it works, how to acquire it, they've read the books, the, all the self-help books, all the strategy books, they're binging the content, but their belief system is still messed up. It's not where it needs to be according to what they're saying. Because they're saying something, they're believing something totally different. Okay, so now let's take it to the whiteboard. All right, I've given you the case study, right? Of people watching, you're making anywhere between 60 and 150,000 bucks. You have anywhere from 300 to a million dollars in debt. You're cash flowing between 500 and 5,500 dollars. This is majority of my audience. You're between the ages of 45 and 54 is majority of my audience. That is roughly 35, 33% according to the last year. Over the lifetime of my YouTube channel, it's like 32, 30%, okay? So you're somewhere around this. Maybe you're 55, maybe you're 44, right? So you're, you're in there. And you're most likely single, divorced, you're a widow, or you're married with kids, and you live in the US, and you live in the United States, okay? I'm gonna give you two definitions of the questions that I've been asking you to give me this whole entire time, okay? There is the world view of what wealth is, and then there's the kingdom view of what wealth is, okay? When I say kingdom, I'm implying that there is a king <clears throat> in this scenario. The king is not me. This king is someone else. This king is not a human being. This king is this creator this almighty being, God, who is declaring himself a king, and this king has a domain, okay? So 
I'm going to give the definition of what this king, who happens to be my king, I serve this king all my life, all the days of my of the rest of my life since 2015-ish, right, is when I decided to join and enroll and submit and yield to this kingdom, right? So that's what I mean by the king's definition of wealth and the belief system is broken down right here. And then this is the world view, or in other words, Google, right? Social media. This is where I pulled the answers as to what wealth is. So the world view of wealth, in a nutshell, wealth is the abundance of valuable possessions or money. So great job, Edwin and uh, BZ and even, even Kim a little bit and Amit. And like we all pretty much got it right. Why? Because you're in the world and that's your worldview, right? So there's literally a billion plus answers or probably 8 billion answers because each and every one of us are unique human beings created and we all have our own thoughts about what wealth is. But we can pretty much sum it up of what we're all saying is there is an abundance factor more than what you need. So there's an abundance more than what you need. Everybody's answer, Kim, Edwin's, mine, Amit, BZ, Morris, all implied a lot. So basically more than what you need. So that's wealth. That's what wealth is, abundance, a lot of something. In this case, in the worldview, an abundance of valuable possessions or money. Valuable possessions or money. That is the abundance of. So you either have an abundance of health, an abundance of money, an abundance of cars, an abundance of boats, an abundance of resources, an abundance of connections, an abundance of businesses, an abundance of stocks, you name it. That's, that's wealth, according to the world. Now, how do we acquire it? How do you acquire wealth is based on your belief about wealth. And there's a billion plus answers to that. But the way I've summed it up, all the research I've done so far on the internet and Google and books and all this stuff, is there's a component of working hard is how one would acquire wealth. You must earn, you must study, you must perform, you must master a thing, you must multiply the thing that you've mastered, you must own, protect, and control. No one would disagree with any of these components here. If I want good health, I gotta work for it meaning I must exercise, I must eat right, I must eat clean, I must be conscious and aware of my caloric intake, right? I must know how my body operates. I, I need to know the, the bones, the muscles, the brain, the emotions, all this stuff, right? If I wanna make a ton of money, I need to work extremely harder than everyone else. I must earn my keep. If I wanna make a lot of money, I need to study a topic, a service, that, can, that I can provide at a masterful level as I'm performing and people pay me top dollar for that. I then must figure out a way to multiply that action, right? Because true wealth, you're able to separate you from the wealth. So that means it's just bomb. It's just coming in all different directions, not necessarily based on your performance, right? But to get there, you had to perform. You had to work. You had to earn. You had to do all these things. And at some point, you have to own protect, control the wealth that you are creating, right? And then what happens is every single rich, wealthy person that you hear of, talk of in terms of worldview context, wealth comes with some other things too we may or may not like. Wealth comes with pain, with worry, with fear, with sorrow, with death, right? It, it comes at this expense according to the worldview. You may lose it all but get it all back because you technically did not lose the wealth, which is interesting because then that's kind of like contradictory statement. Because if, if wealth is the abundance of things, possessions or money, and you lose it all, then didn't you lose the wealth that came with it? And when I hear wealthy people talk about things, how they lost a ton of money, a business failed, and then they restarted and they're more successful than ever before it's like well that doesn't make sense didn't you lose all your wealth and when they talk they they technically are saying that they didn't lose wealth they only lost the thing attached to wealth 
So that implies that wealth is something different. So if wealth is something different based on wealthy people that have given their testimonies in the world, then this would mean that the world's view definition of wealth is completely wrong. It's completely wrong. It can't be right. Let me know if you are with me so far or if I lost you. We just got done defining what wealth is and our belief system about wealth. Every single one of us have attached wealth to the abundance of something. Health, finance, resources, network, possessions. But if I were to give anyone in this room everything you are saying, right? All the abundance, all the health, all the money that you could ever imagine. If you had it all, so you're wealthy because we can prove it. Kim has all this wealth. Kim has all this money. Kim has all these houses and cars and boats and jets. So Kim is wealthy. We all agree Kim is wealthy. Now, if we took all that away from Kim, we took all her supposed wealth away from her, does Kim know how to get it back? Yes, because she was able to define what it was before she had it and she figured out how to acquire it according to the worldview. You gotta work hard, earn, study, perform, master thing, multiply, own, protect, control, all these things. So even though she lost all the wealth, then got it all back. I mean, we've heard the story, we've heard Actors do this, movie stars, athletic folks, business entrepreneurs, gurus. We've heard the stories. Uh, you look at people like Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, uh, maybe Warren Buffett. I don't think. I don't think he had a downfall and an uprise. I'm not sure. But there's been tons of people in the marketplace that have given their testimony, given their story. People in the church, people not in the church, they all say they acquired wealth, they made a ton of it, and there was a point in their life where they lost it all, and then they got it all back, and then some more. So wouldn't that be a, a conflict to the definition of what they said wealth was from the beginning, or what we've all said here? So technically, many of our definitions so far are, are wrong, like every single one, right? Chris tuned in, he says, I believe wealth is the ability to have more options and choices at your disposal. This can manifest in more impact to others, longer lifespan and or giving more to others, right? So he combined the belief. This is more of a, he's, he answered the question more of his belief about wealth, not necessarily definition, right? Because ability implies a user in that, equa in that equation, a, a, a thought. But if it's just a definition, it's is this bum 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 bum? I would like to hear your definition, right? So every single one of us here having a legacy, legacy, freedom, anything you want to conserve, having the ability to live longer, abundance of goods, money, or right, goods or money, financially independent. So these are technically all incorrect as it relates to what wealth is. It, it can't be because if Edwin got it all and then loses it, does he lose wealth too? you would say no, because he still has the ability, he or she still has the ability to, to get it back. But if you get it back, that would imply that you never, you never technically lost it, because you, you know, right? Isn't this kind of like, am I getting somewhere? Is this kind of weird? I've been wrestling with this a little bit, because I'm like, wait a minute, what the heck is wealth? Because if I'm chasing the abundance of, and I master these skills and, and ways of getting it, and let's say I lose it. Let's say someone takes away my YouTube channel. I get I get canceled. I get shut down. I lose all my clients overnight. You take away all my money. Did you take away my wealth? What would be your answer? Give me a no or a yes. If, if I, Denzel Rodriguez, loses my YouTube channel, loses all of you guys' trust, let's say I lose all of my clients, they shut down all my bank accounts. They take all my money. They take my house. They take all my things. I literally have no thing. I have no thing other than the clothes that I'm wearing. Did I lose my wealth? Answer that for me, Kim, BZ, Edwin, Christopher, Adrian, Ross. I'm going to wait. Let me see if I get a couple no's or yeses. Crawford, no. Who else? Tony, no. Adrian says yes. Interesting. 
So according to Adrian, Adrian would only be correct in my example, according to the worldview. Tony says no. Delia says yes. Interesting. Patrick says yes. This is, this is interesting. BZ says no. Oh man, we're like 50-50 right now. We're split, we're divided. 34 people in the house. No, it's in the line of credit. You're killing me, Lawrence. Oh my God. <laughs> he said, no, it's in the line of credit. Oh my God. Ross says, you only lose your wealth if you lose your ability to live. Are you breathing? Question mark. Are you eating? Question mark. If so, you still have wealth because it's tied to life. Okay, okay, Ross. You're getting somewhere. You're getting somewhere. I, I see where you're getting. Farah says, no. Okay, now technically, in the context of the worldview, in the context of the worldview, in my example here, if we're going according to the definition of the worldview's definition, that wealth is the abundance of valuable possessions or money, and the way we acquire those possessions or money is through hard work, earning, studying, performing, mastering a thing, multiplying, owning, protecting, and controlling, those possessions or money in my name and I lose it all, right? Then according to the world's view definition of wealth, Patrick is correct, Delius Morris is correct, and Adrian is correct, so they're paying attention. Everyone else answered emotionally. In fact, I bet you answered in a way that defended me because you're, you're, you're almost like, you know, in America, we, we, we take people down, right? And then we build them up again. We, we love comeback stories. This is how we've been programmed with movies, television, shows, is there's the main character. They lose their family, divorce, death, right? War, and then they get taken down. And then, they, and then by the end of the show, or by the end of the movie, they become the hero again. And we all cheer, yay, because we love Boom, we love seeing the downfall, just like we love seeing when cars crash or there's a car crash, we have to slow down and look. We have to, it's like you almost can't control it. It's a reactive response to a dangerous thing that happened to somebody else. It happens to us, we want everybody to be like, go, 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 look away, don't look away at my problems, right? But we love to look at people fall and fail because we love the comeback. That's just American culture right there. We love to see a downfall and a comeback. So many of you answered no in a way that was either in support of me because you believe, this is where you injected your belief, not the definition, that even though Denzel could lose his whole channel, lose all his clients, lose his house, all his money, all his bank accounts closed, that he would know how to get it back. And, and you believe that because you believe that about yourself too, okay? But technically, you would be incorrect because according to the worldview, that's not what wealth is. Wealth is attached to the abundance of valuable possessions or money, which again is a contradictory statement because when you look at people in the world and how they think and operate, they're saying one thing they're believing something different. They're saying wealth is this. Here's how you get it. Here's how you make all this money. Here's how you 10x your income. Here's how you do this. Here's how you protect. Here's how you control. They're selling, 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 but they believe something different, without a doubt. Is this good so far? Is this valuable, right? Even, you know, everyone's kind of like, you know, you're in the middle, right? It kind of like a gray area. Yes, but only temporary, right? According to the worldview, yes. Okay, Chris, you got it too. So here's where I'm, logically looking at this, if someone tells me the definition of something and then I put it into action and it doesn't yield, I experiment your definition, I experiment your view, and I go through and I get to the end result and it's a different result from what you said, then I cannot rely on this worldview definition. That's science, right? We have a hypothesis, we observe, we, we experiment, we, we observe, we see a result. We can do this 1 billion times. And I'm pretty sure with full conviction, this right here is all wrong. So if the world's view definition of wealth is completely wrong, then what are we left with? Well, we have to now consider, we have to consider the idea of a creator because we're human beings and we're living in a world over 8 billion people now. If we go all the way back, it must have started with just one and one. So then 
you look at the universe, you look at all of the facts given, and you're like, you look at the design of the earth and it implies a designer. You look at any material object created by man or not created by man, animals and plants, land and sea and air and sky and clouds and universe and stars and galaxies and other worlds and oxygen. You look at the temperatures. Everything is in perfect balance for there to sustain life. It implies a creator. So we're left with this final definition here on the, on the right side, which is the king's definition. So what is wealth according to the king? According to the king, aka the creator, wealth is a blessing, is a gift. Let's start there. If wealth is a blessing, is a gift, that means that wealth cannot be taken away. Once it is given, it, it is a gift. You can't, you can't give back a gift. You can't, it's impossible, right? You can't give back a gift. You literally can't. Someone you love gives you a gift, a stranger, right? Or a coworker or a boss. It is nearly impossible to say no to the, you're like, oh my God, no, you didn't have to do that, right? We do that. We put our hands up. Oh my God, no, no. Why did you get me a gift? Oh my God, no, you didn't have to do that. Oh, you're so nice. Thank you. Oh, you're, you're a stranger. Why are you giving me a gift? Here's $100. Here's $10,000. Here's $5,000. It's a gift, bro. This is a gift. Are you sure it doesn't come with anything else? This is a gift. No ties? Okay. You take, it's nearly impossible to decline a gift. You would take the gift, and if you don't want the gift, you throw it out. You can take the gift and put it on your shelf and put it in storage and never use it. But you still received the gift. It was a blessing. You have it, it can't be taken away. Even if the thing got destroyed, it was the what? It was, it was the blessing that came from the giver. So the formula for wealth to even be created, right? Is there has to be a giver and the receiver, right? There has to be a giver, there has to be a receiver in order for the wealth transaction to even occur. That's logical. So what is wealth? Wealth is a blessing. It's a gift. Because according to the worldview, when we have, when we have observed, quote unquote, wealthy people that have lost possessions or money, whether it was from death, divorce, kids, drugs, bad business deal, bad investment, world economic collapse, COVID, World War I, World War II, it doesn't matter because the wealth remained, it can always be built back. We dropped a atomic bomb on Hiroshima and they recovered. So we took away something, you know, when, when America goes to war, uh, when, when countries fight, people die, land gets destroyed, things get taken from each side, but then they seem to recover. They seem to build up again. They seem to look better than before. So it's like, how did the concept of wealth stay even in disaster, tragedy, whatever the, the case may be? So again, wealth has to be a blessing. That is the only logical answer here. Wealth can't be money. Wealth can't be possessions. It cannot be. You could make the argument that having stewardship or ownership of those things creates more opportunities or, or options. But if we say that wealth is the thing, it is wealth, right? Then if you were to lose it, then you yourself would be void of wealth. You yourself would be void of wealth. You, you would not be able to get it back if you lost it all. And that's just simply not true. So many people have lost their homes to hurricanes and storms and disasters. Um, bad, bad business decisions, bad business dealings with bad partnerships, and they lose quote unquote, some of their wealth, but then get it back. Okay. So wealth has to be a blessing. That's the first component. That's what wealth is. Then if we believe this to be true, that wealth is a blessing, it's a gift, then how do I acquire it? It would be simple. We've got to find the giver. Like, is that not the most logical, simple, 
answer ever known to man instead of trying to sift through a billion answers in the world and still fall short and still fall short. So this would imply that I just need to find a giver. Now, who would be qualified to give wealth? Who would be the most qualified person to give wealth? Well, in the world, we would think maybe, you know, a world leader, right? A president, a prime minister, maybe a king, um, a multi, multi, multi billionaire. Okay, we could, we could probably say that those are the most qualified people, but even them themselves, they must have got wealth from somewhere too, right? So that they're not the source. They're a resource, but they're not the source. For me, logically, logically speaking, I would rather go to the source to figure out an answer to a problem I'm having than a resource, right? And if I'm going to go to a resource, I want to make sure that resource is an authorized dealer for the source. I have two Hyundai vehicles and I have one GMC vehicle. I don't go to Mercedes to have them fix my GMC vehicle. Or if I had a Mercedes, I'm not going to go to GMC. I'm not going to go to Hyundai dealer. An unwise decision that would not be wealthy for my wealth, right? For me to make that decision. I'm going to go to an authorized Hyundai dealer, an authorized Mercedes dealer, an authorized GMC dealer to make sure my car is properly repaired. Same thing works with our belief system about wealth, right? Is if I just simply go to the source of the giver, then I have a 100% chance of receiving wealth because wealth is a blessing. So how do we acquire it? There's only one answer. Seek the kingdom. And when I say kingdom, I'm saying seek the king's domain. If you seek the king's domain, you get in his dominance, his domain, and, and you say that is the king. The king has the blessing. All I need to do is seek his kingdom first and ask, it shall be given. Let's say you didn't ask, and let's say you're just gonna, you're gonna go off of his own words, right? So that the king has words that he um, has shared with us. There's this book that we call the Bible. It's technically a multitude of books, 66 of them, right? Could be more, could be less, could be wrong. But there's a, a multitude of these books that he himself wrote and put some key details as to how to access his kingdom and receive these wealth blessings. I have four documentation, constitutional, legally binding details as to how to acquire wealth. It's, it's legally binding. It's in the constitution of this kingdom. It's legally binding, reliable and sound because we now know what the correct definition is because we've proven that the world's view of wealth is incorrect. We've proven it by simply going through the process. We've proven it. The Word document that the king wrote in his book called Genesis, in chapter 1, verse 28, he gives a formula, how to live, which then creates wealth, which is a blessing given by the Creator by the source. That definition, I, I summarize it right here so that we can properly understand what this king is, is telling us. So I'm going to read it for you first. So I'm going to go to Genesis, the book of Genesis, and we're going to go to 28, right? And it says, and God, creator, the king, blessed them, and God blessed them. So if wealth is a blessing, that means, that's implying that wealth is already inside of whoever them is in the context here, right? If we go back, we know who them is. Them is talking to man. So if we are in fact created beings by a creator and the creator put wealth in us, that means you can never lose wealth because it was given before you were even born. <sighs> this is amazing for me. This is a breakthrough for me because I realized, wait a second, I don't need to be chasing wealth. I don't need to be going after wealth. I don't need to concern myself with acquiring 
wealth because it's already in me. Because if you took every single thing away from me and left me with my body and the clothes on my back, I would get it all back because I've been given a gift and you cannot take a gift back. You can't give a gift back because the gift wasn't yours. You can't give what you don't own, right? You can't. So in 20, it says, and, and God blessed them wealth right? When we, when we see the word bless, we can translate that for wealth. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. That's a powerful statement, buddy. So in a nutshell, be fruitful literally means to work. So, all right, some of the worldview got some of it right. Got to work. So you still got to work and work in this context means to become who you are in the worldview context. This is why so many of you hate your job. This is why so many of you don't like to work because you're working for some one, some thing instead of working to simply be more of who you are. If you're, if you're becoming more of who you are every single day, uh, you're going to be a pretty happy, happy dude. You're going to be a pretty happy woman, okay? You're gonna be pretty happy. Let me tell you, every day I wake up, I try to become more of who I am every single day. The only way to become more of who I am every single day is if I seek the kingdom because I realize that there's a creator involved, the source. He's the giver. If he keeps giving me more wealth, which is a blessing, which is a gift, if he gives me more gifts and more blessings, it's going to reveal more of who I am and how am I supposed to be operating. So be fruitful, work, become more of who you are, and then multiply that. So he, this is such a good formula. This is the best business plan I've ever seen in my life. Work, become more of who you are. So you're working in an area that you're already good at because you were given a gift before you were even born. You were given a blessing before you were even born. Now you discovered the blessing because you seeked the kingdom first. Now you're fruitful. But now you have to multiply. So you basically are investing in yourself. That's what many of the gurus have told me. Invest in yourself. So many of us are trying to what? Invest in something for someone in somewhere instead of investing in you. Here is the kingdom's definition right here. Invest in you. That creates compound. That creates a compounding effect if you multiply. So many people are trying to grow their money in their 401k. So many people are trying to grow their money in their whole life policy. They're trying to grow their money in their stocks, bonds, mutual funds. When you should be multiplying by investing in you. So you can create this compounding effect. And then replenish is the next third step here in the formula. It's a five-step formula. Replenish simply means repeat till you achieve mastery. When you start mastering the thing, which is you, so many, so many of us, I, I talk to so many moms, so many dads, they don't know who they are. And I'm like, how are you supposed to comprehend an investment if you don't even know who you are? How are you supposed to comprehend the idea of building a multi-million dollar business, having a multi-million dollar portfolio, having a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio if you have no idea who you are, how you operate, how you respond, how you react, how do you proactively handle conflict? So repeating being fruitful and multiplication allows you to master the thing you were working on so that when you have excess, you then put it into these investments for it to then grow and allow rule of 72 to occur. Okay. Once you've reached mastery, guess what happens? Now you're in the subdue stage where you are controlling a market. You are influencing the market. You don't own the market, but you influence it. You have the strings. You're like, you're the master puppet. The puppet is the market and you're controlling it, right? You're controlling it because you've subdued your economic environment. You have complete control and influence over your environment. I can say in my household, I have complete control. Maybe not. I'm, I'm engaged. I have a fiance. So, you know, those who know, you know what I'm saying. So I'm just going to act like I have Right. So even if you were to act like it, not fake it till you make it, I'm not saying that. Just talk to the guys here. Right. So if you control your influence, I got to be careful what I say here. I'd be very, very careful, careful, careful. I'd be very careful. 
subdue, control, influence. Let's not say over people. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. You get in trouble. Us guys in big, big, big trouble. Let's just say over your bank account, which you may not even have true control over that because when she asks for something, she receives because you're the giver and you, yeah, so darn it. Yeah, this part I'm still working on. Just only totally being honest. When it comes to subdue, I'm still working on it. All right, I could be having this totally wrong. But to get to this point, life is, is really, really interesting in a good way, really rewarding in a great way. I mean, it's, it starts off awesome right here. If, if I could just help more of my clients get in a place of where they can become more of who they are based on who wrote them, based on who designed them, based on who created them, based on who blessed them to begin with, what? Game changer. So be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, control, influence, own nothing. Then you'll have domi dominance. You'll have dominion. You'll be able to dominate and rule. Now, we have to be able to back this up even more, what we're saying here, right? So is there a case study? Because we, we did a case study on here, on these people, 45 to 54 years old, single divorced, widowed, married, with kids in the United States, making between 60 and 150,000 a year, 300, $1 million in debt, for cash flow of five to 5,500. We incorporated wealth in the worldview's definition, abundance of wealth, uh, valuable possessions or money. We figured out how to acquire. We're going to do all this stuff. I'm going to increase their income. I'm going to decrease expenses. I'm going to pay off debt or leverage debt. I'm going to increase cash flow, and they're going to have more wealth, right? We're going to do all this stuff, but it's going to come with pain, worry, fear, sorrow, and death. We know that for a fact. Wealth in the world comes with pain, suffering, worry, fears, doubts. This is why you have to hire lawyers, doctors, accountants, CPAs, strategists, financial coaches, advisors, investment advisors, business coaches, mentors. You got to hire all this stuff just to be able to protect what you've built so you don't lose it. Over here on the kingdom side, we know that wealth isn't the thing. Wealth is simply a blessing. So you can't, you can't get wealth. You can only receive it. You can't go take wealth or, or acquire it. You can't. It's impossible because wealth over here, we already figured out the definition of the worldviews on, on wealth is totally incorrect and false. So wealth is a blessing. It's a gift. I don't even have to work for the blessing or the gift because I was born with it according to the legally binding documents, according to this king who calls himself the creator of all things, the king of kings, is saying in his documented writings in the book of Genesis 1 verse 28 that he blessed them, mankind, before they took their first breath. He blessed them. Interesting. Okay, well, now we need a case study. To, to prove that because you could say one thing and mean another. So the next one is going to the same book of Genesis and you go to chapter 12 verses 1 through 3. So in, in Genesis 12, chapter 12 of Genesis verses 1 through 3, it says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee, wealth. So that's a blessing on a blessing. He was born with a blessing and now he's about to get another blessing. And make thy name great. So not only am I going to bless you, this God, talking to this guy named Abram. He's going to bless him. He was already born with a blessing, but he's going to bless him again. Then he says he's going to make his name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So this implies that this creator, this king, created me, put a blessing inside of me before I drew my first breath. Then I come to discover who my king is, and that's a blessing in and of itself because I just got the formula for wealth multiplication. And this is now implying, according to this case study of Abram, his name will be great and he'll also be a blessing to others. Very interesting. And then it says, and I will bless them that bless thee. So Abram, 
gets a blessing and then he will, Abram will be able to bless others because now he's a blessing. And God says, on top of that, I will bless them that got blessed by Abram. I will bless them that bless thee. So as long as I continue to be a blessing to others, I will be blessed. And the receiver of the blessing chooses to also bless, you will be a blessing and be blessed. So everyone's being blessed in this blessing. Isn't that crazy? And now here's a promise. Here's what's interesting. Not only will I bless them that bless thee, it says, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Very interesting. So we have a clear case study here. If are born with a blessing, if this is true, right? If you're leaning towards this, this got to be true because the worldview is totally wrong. And we went through it. We, we Science proved that worldview's definition is completely wrong. So now I'm airing over here. Now I just got to figure out who this king is, how he operates. And he says that his definition is wealth is a blessing from the Lord. So wealth is a blessing, it's a gift from the king, the giver. The giver gives blessings. Because when God made man, he blessed them, meaning that we, as human beings, have the ability to give blessings. Or in other words, give wealth. So we can give wealth. So we now need a few other either case studies or fact, law. Either we need another case study or we need laws that protect the blessing, right? For, for, for example, you, you and I, we all have driver's license to get on the road and drive a car. In order to validate your driver's license, you would have had to gone to the government, third party, DMV, to validate your driver's license, right? And there are some legally binding documents, contracts that states that Denzel Rodriguez is a legal driver in the United States to drive on the roads. In the event I get pulled over by an authority and they try to challenge my legitimacy, my authority to drive on the road, I then pull out my wallet and I show them my ID, my driver's license identification number I, I this 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 blows my mind this so you have this right we take that same concept apply it toward the concept of giver receiver giver is the source of wealth and has the ability to give wealth and because this giver is a creator and created the receiver in his image in his likeness in his character in his authority now the receiver has the ability to bless. True. Can we, can we prove that even more? So if we go to another legally binding book, we go to Proverbs 22, right? So this is a declaration, sort of a statement here as the way that I'm processing this. Could be wrong. But it does say in Proverbs 22, verse 4, by humility... And the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. What is riches? Is riches another word for wealth? The world would prove that. When you say wealth, you mean rich. When you mean rich, you mean wealth. Some people try to, try to disconnect the two. But I would argue that those two words are, are somewhat hand in hand, could be used interchangeably, may have their own distinct because you could be rich in health but poor in finances that's true that doesn't mean you're not wealthy right so you could make that distinction you say well wait a minute Denzel wealth is a blessing we born with that riches is is definitely literally meaning either the possession or the uh, mastery of your health your fitness your skills, your belief system, your philosophies, right? So you could make that distinction. So we'll say that, but it says by humility. So there's a characteristic that we would need to have on this side in order to truly receive 
more blessings while we're living because we're born with a blessing, right? Everyone is born with blessings, but then there's more blessings as you get older and older that, that, we, uh, that we grow with, right? And it says, by humility and fear. So if, as long as I'm humble and I fear the king, not the worry, pain, and fear of the world view, if I put my fear toward the king, give it to him, and stay humble in that, then what comes of that is more riches, honor, and life. Okay, another declaration statement, we go to Proverbs 10 and go to 22, and it says, the blessings of the Lord maketh rich, it maketh rich. So it makes, that's what that means. The, bl the blessings of the Lord, king, makes you rich. Pretty straightforward. And he addeth no sorrow with it, meaning no pain, no worry, no fear, no death, only life, only abundance. Some may argue that's not true, but I would, I would draw a clear distinction here, right? So I'm going to erase this part here and say, look, if, in fact, we know that if I try to make wealth in the world, it's going to come with some pains, some worries, some fears, some sorrows, even death. We know that to be true. On the kingdom side of things, wealth is a blessing, so it's a gift I didn't have to work for. The king is then saying, hey, instead of experiencing fear in the world and worry, cast your fear, basically, or you could say submit fear and worry to the king. This is a formula for success. So you and I are going to have fear no matter what, because we have built in our brains. I learned this through therapy. This is insane. I learned this through therapy that you and I, we all have a part of our brain is the part I don't know if it's called the amygdala. Maybe someone could correct me. But there's a part in your brain that doesn't think, okay? It only reacts. So in other words, that part of your brain is called anxiety. And it has three responses, fight, flight, or freeze. So you're either going to freeze in the moment when you're experiencing a fearful, worry, some event. You're going to fight to protect what's yours when you experience fear, or you're gonna run. You're gonna run away and hide. Those are your three options, okay? And the strategy, or you could say there's a there's the, the fourth option, is instead of having to decide whether I'm gonna fight for this, run away, freeze, I'm gonna I'm gonna receive the fear that I just got because it because I can't get rid of fear. Right? Where you're literally You've been designed that way. It's part of your brain. Again, if someone knows it in the comments, like drop it in the comments for me, what part of your brain is that? Like science has proven this, okay? It's insane. So it's a part of your brain that literally just reacts. It doesn't think. The other part of your brain catches up with the reaction and starts processing what the heck is going on in this situation. And then logically at that point, that's when you submit your fear to the king. So you just go to him and say, hey, king, I have, a, I have a fear that I may lose this home. I have a fear that my line of credit might get reduced. I have a fear that my credit cards might get canceled. I have a fear that my HELOC might get frozen while doing this velocity banking strategy. I have these fears, these worries. So um, king, lord, god, I'm going to give this fear to you because I don't want it. And you said to give it to you because it's part of your legally binding words, your, your law abiding words and you're a law-abiding king uh, to your own laws right that you've established on this on this planet so um here you go right so you submit the fear and worry to the to the king and then as a result of that humility and vulnerability in honestly giving your fear acknowledging you have fear and worries and you're going to give it to the king instead instead of you hold on to it you're going to let it go, let it go, right? As a result, the blessing of the Lord that comes from that will make you rich in that transaction and the Lord will add no sorrow with it.
meaning. Here's a, a, a fun example here. Let's say I'll, I'll use, uh, who, who's with me right now? Comment, comment, comment. I think I saw, I'm gonna use Christopher. Okay, so Christopher, I see him and that was like the last chat. Let's say Christopher wins the lottery. We're gonna do two examples. Christopher wins the lottery and his, and we're gonna use the world's view definition of wealth and then we'll do the definition of the king and processing that, okay? So Christopher wins the lottery in the world. He wins 100 mil, more money than he's ever seen in his life and he immediately feels fear and concern. But instead of giving that fear and concern to the king, he now is gonna go on a major journey in the world and hire the smartest people on the planet, advisors of all walks of life, to advise him on how to best use this $100 million. Now, what just happened? Christopher just won $100 million in the world that he did not work for, he did not earn, he did not study, perform, or master the thing to get that 100 mil. But now that he knows the definition of the world, it's an abundance of valuable possessions or money. So he has money. So he's now wealthy. Christopher just instantly became wealthy. He just received the blessing. Cool. Now <clears throat> he's going to work extremely hard, earn, study, perform, master thing, multiply, own, protect, and control by hiring the best people in the world to help him protect this money. Now, as a result of that, even when you hire the best of the best of the best of the best of the best in every industry, every marketplace, right? He will still have fear and worry because wealth comes with pain, worth, worry, fear, sorrow, and death. It comes with it. You can't get away from it. Someone's going to die when he wins his $100 million. Someone's going to get hurt. Someone's going to come to him in pain, in worry, in fear, and it's going to put that fear and worry on him. He now has to fight, flight, or freeze because that's how our brains work, okay? So same scenario. Christopher wins the lottery and has this perspective of wealth and has this formula in place. And here's what he's going to do. He immediately, fear and worry, all this stuff. He just won $100 million. He probably just had a heart attack. He's like, oh my God, I just want to win a hundred freaking million dollars. I've never seen that kind of money before in my life. I don't know what in the world I'm going to do with this hundred million dollars. Guess what? Since he knows his king in this example, Christopher knows his king and he goes back to law, how it works. Logically speaking here, he just says, okay, I just have to cast my fear and submit my fear and worry to the king. So he does that. He submits his fears and worries to the king and then the king gets involved and advises Christopher on who to hire, who to call, where to show up. All the, all the steps will be put in place for him because he just, he just got involved. He involved the king in a worldly transaction that just occurred. He submitted his fears and worry to the king. The king gets involved and now is invite, in advising Christopher He's consulting with Christopher on how to use that $100 million. And Christopher will get the best of the best of the best of the best of the best in every industry according to how to multiply, how to be fruitful, how to multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion over that wealth that has been created. Which formula would you rather have? Let me know in the comments. Which formula would you rather have? The world's view, which is convoluted, constricted, conflicting, absolutely wrong or would you have it or would you rather have the king's view on what wealth is and how wealth is created and how you acquire the wealth and how you multiply the wealth and how you keep the wealth perpetuate the wealth and have dominion over the wealth